Uh, Brian, uh, I know we got to shake your hand a while ago and say uh, welcome to Texas and, and thanks for making that decision that you and hundreds of thousands, actually millions of people uh, over the last decade have met, to, come to, to come to Texas and, and, and to enjoy freedom. Because that's really what it's about, uh, is that states compete against each other. They decide, uh, I, I think, in, the, in, the, in the, the grand scheme of things, and they should, uh, they should decide. Uh, how best to uh, deliver health care, how best to uh, deliver education, how best to implement energy policy, how best uh, to decide the, the issues that are important for, for their citizens. I mean, uh, there, there are things that go on in California that I will tell you I don't agree with either personally or, or professionally. But I think it is their right to decide that in California if that is what they want to do. Uh, for instance, in my remarks here a minute, I'll talk about Illinois and, and what they just did this last weekend in increasing uh, a, a tax burden on uh, the people of the state of, of Illinois. And I can assure you we will be up there recruiting them <laughs> to come to Texas, to live in the land of freedom, just like we did in, in Washington State just prior to the uh, to, the, to the elections back in, in the fall of, of, of 10. Washington State was making a decision on whether they wanted to implement a personal income tax for the first time in that state's history. We wrote letters to those businesses up there and said, Dear Mr. or Miss Businesswoman, if you want to come into uh, the state of Texas after they do that, we'll welcome you with open arms. But that's the type of competition that I think makes our country stronger. It's the type of strengthening of our fiber of this country. And Brooke, I want to go back to uh, the Public Policy Foundation for a moment. And, and, and actually, um, for, for those of you just, uh, Brooke and I actually met in the mid-90s mid-90s, 20 years ago, uh, no, it wasn't 20 years ago. Oh, it was 88, wasn't it? Jiminy Cricket. How'd the years get by so fast? But anyway, she was a, a, a state FFA officer, and uh, um, I'm going to be with Jay Hoffman uh, today doing a film on the FFA uh, that will hopefully be a, a, a successful film, and, and, and obviously uh, filming it in the state of Texas. And, and, and giving those uh, individuals the, uh, the reason to come here, to be here, to uh, employ Texans as they work in the film industry. And, uh, but, Brooke, it's policy foundations, uh, research and reporting, and, and for all of you that support uh, this, this institution, um, helping guide the members of the legislature, and I know there's many of them here uh, today, as they develop, they hone the agenda for the 82nd legislative session, um, working to keep Texas on the right track. Um, folks um, have told me for years, you know, don't believe everything you read in the papers. I know we've all heard that and seen that uh, through the years. and, and uh, that advice may be more useful than ever uh, as we uh, as we go through this. Uh, um, you know, it's it's always amazing to me that the uh, the the political writers, the pundits, they they try to paint the absolute worst picture that they can uh, to to stir up as <laughs> as much concern as they can, um, and um, the, the, you know this, they're painting a picture of a just absolutely impending budget crisis in, in, in the state of Texas. And, um, I, I'm, and listen, I'm not belittling the challenges that face the members of the legislature. Talmadge, we had the same uh, issue, if you will, in 2003. As a matter of fact, we heard the same stories of doom and gloom. It's the end of the world if you don't increase. matter of fact, if you don't pass a personal income tax, it'll be no one will move to the state of Texas. You'll be the laughing stock of America. It goes on and on. We heard it all. But this last election, 
there was a clear message sent across this country. There was a clear message sent in the state of Texas by the voters to the, uh, the elected officials. We want you to balance the budget without raising taxes. We want you to live within your means. In short, they want more of what <laughs> we've been doing in the state of Texas uh, across this country and in Washington. They want us to make principal decisions. They want us to uh, prioritize what's important, Chris, and, 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 uh, and, and put those into place and reduce the spending in, in places that the legislature through the duly elected uh, or, our, or through our, our citizens' electoral processes have, have told them. And it was a clear message. And again, we, we did this in 2003. We've uh, we had a challenging session, and the doom and gloomers all said, you know, you, you, you can't cut that much out of state government. And um, we resisted their pleas to raise taxes. The absolute best thing we have never done in the state of Texas was implement a personal income tax. The best thing we've never done. You continued to remain loyal, disciplined to that time-honored principle of fiscal discipline. And it yielded an economy that generated more jobs than any other state in the Union. It's led the nation in exports for the last eight years running, home to more Fortune 1000 companies than any other state. In the last few years, that ripple effect of the global and national recession, it began to, to penetrate into the state of Texas. But it was our sound policies that helped us rebound quicker than any other state as well. You know, now those policies are helping Texas lead the way out of this recession. As an American, it, it troubles me, as I talked about earlier, uh, when, when you see a legislature and a lame duck governor making those decisions like they're making in Illinois to tax the rich without talking about how to make the, uh, the, the thoughtful prioritized decisions on how to govern, how to maintain the needed services at the same time not strangling I, I, I admit it, I'm only an animal science major from the blood of Texas A&M. I'm not a PhD in economics from Harvard. But I get it when it comes to the concepts of economics. You cannot continue to have an economy that will grow if you tax and put a burden on those that will risk their capital to create the jobs that in turn create the wealth. It is just that simple. You cannot do that. In Texas, we were obviously very blessed with a spirit of competitiveness that I will put up against any other state. And, um, you know, I'm pretty fired up about um, competing against these other states. You know, it was really interesting Ted, as we listened and saw or reported back to us, governors in their inaugural addresses or in their, their first responses of, of, of going into this, this new year, how many of them talked about, we're going we're gonna to go beat Texas. We're going to go take it to Texas. The governor of Florida, the governor of New Mexico, the governor of Oklahoma, all referenced Texas. In, in, in their remarks over the course of the last couple of years, or a couple of weeks. And, and partly it's because I've been challenging them. Um, I, I, don't, you know, I don't consider my job to try to be the most popular guy in town. I do intend to be the most competitive guy in town. And I don't have a problem with that. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is those governors like that. They want to compete. They don't want to sit back and see their jobs leaving their states, going to other states, wherever those may be, because they've overtaxed and overregulated and overlitigated our employers 
know our commitment to continue to keep this state stronger than ever. We need to maintain a predictable regulatory structure. We need to fend off the intrusive federal agencies like the EPA um, as they threaten Texas jobs and our successful air quality programs. We need to continue to fight against lawsuit abuse. I, I talked about over the course of the last couple of years as, as we've moved towards a, an election last November that Texas success was really pretty simple. It was about keeping the taxes low, the regulatory climate fair and predictable, and a legal system that does not allow for oversuing. We need to continue that fight against lawsuit abuse. Employers aren't doing anybody any good when they're tied up at the courthouse. I hope the 82nd legislature will consider improving our important tort protections during this session of the legislature with even greater accountability, transparency, and efficiency. Victims of frivolous lawsuits shouldn't have to bear the financial burden of defending themselves. Instead, that responsibility should fall to the individuals who brought the suit in the first place. Texas is one of the few states in the nation who do not currently have an early dismissal option for obviously frivolous lawsuits, but we should. We should balance that new power for, of, of giving the judges that power by ensuring new causes of action can only be created by the legislature in a very transparent and deliberative manner. We need to make our system more accessible to the little guy by setting up an expedited trials and limited uh, discovery for those lawsuits that are between $10,000 and $100,000, those smaller suits, if you will. These reforms would further improve the legal climate in our, in our state they would impart even more energy to our economy and ratchet up the fairness of our system. Our economy also relies on the renewal of our talent pool. So we need to continue to invest in education, especially those subjects of science and technology and engineering and math, so that Texans can succeed when they go after those jobs of the future. These are the basic building blocks of an economy that has drawn new employers to our state. Uh, so our calling is to fortify them. When times get tight, you know, voices will always call for higher taxes, but that's exactly the wrong approach to take, given the burden it places on Texas families and on Texas employers. Do you really need to tell struggling families that they haven't given enough to government already? Do we really want to derail the job-friendly climate that drives our economy? Nothing kills creativity. Nothing stifles innovation. Nothing halts progress more quickly than raising taxes. As the national and the global economies struggle to recover, that approach looks even more misguided today. Instead, we need to balance the budget with existing revenues, evaluating every state program to determine wants versus needs, then resisting the call to raise taxes. By following those guidelines, no matter the situation, we can get the job done. Of course, budgeting is only part of the uh, issue, is a very important one, but only part of the job at hand. I recently designated eminent domain, Kathleen, as um, a very important issue. I also put sanctuary city and outlawing sanctuary cities on our emergency call as well. You know, we've tweaked the eminent domain law 
uh, over the course of, of the last few legislative sessions, and it's, fine, it's time to finally uh, get those protections for property owners right. And I've been working with Senator Estes and, and uh, Representative Guerin, uh, other stakeholders in, in, uh, the, you know, in the private property groups and, uh, over the last uh, years, and, and we agree, agree that this bill that, uh, that, that uh, Craig and Charlie are, are carrying uh, is the one that can get the job done. We also must abolish the sanctuary city rules so that professional law enforcement personnel have the discretion to do their job, uh, keeping our families and our neighborhoods safe. Uh, immigration laws and their enforcement are the responsibility of the federal government. But, you know, we, we can't compound their failure by preventing Texas peace officers from doing their jobs. In, in the end, it's going to take um, our peace officers, uh, their efforts, but we've got to keep them safe um, so they, in turn, can serve the people of the state in an appropriate way and keep our citizens safe. The legislative session is more than just uh, seeing our state through another budgeting cycle. Um, we're, we're still dealing with the whelms of a group of people that thousands of miles away uh, in our nation's capital whose decisions are proving very costly to our state. Um, you know, I, I certainly hope that the November elections uh, have at least uh, slowed Washington's ongoing uh, appetite to encroach upon the affairs of our states, uh, but there's still plenty of big government advocates calling for uh, Washington to continue on the track that, that they were on and continue to uh, come into the states and, and say, listen, we know best how to uh, run your state, whether it's educating your children or energy policy or a host of other uh, issues that uh, I've yet to find mentioned in the Constitution, uh, Ted, but we're going to continue pushing back pushing back on the federal government uh, in areas ranging everywhere from health care, as I said, to how we educate our children. Time and time again, Texas has demonstrated the ability to solve these types of challenges um, through innovation and through dedication um, to solid conservative values. And with your support and your continued uh, input. These very principles will continue to guide uh, us over the course of the next 138 days as we set our state's direction uh, for the next two years. And I think, uh, Talmadge, given our track record, what we have proven that we can do over uh, the last eight years, I'm encouraged for our prospects uh, uh, towards success and continue uh, for Texas to be uh, looked upon and talked about is that place we're going to go whip. Because the fact of the matter is, if, if we ever lose that competitive zeal, if we ever lose our ability to compete, then America will be a worse place. And I happen to think our better years are in front of us, not just as a state, but as a country. And there was no better example of that and message that we got than last November the 2nd. God bless you and thank you all for coming out and being with us today.